Ross Bowman Podcast. You better go Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, back again as always with your co-host, Chris Coles. Colson, Mr. Christopher, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, indeed. Uh, Chris, you know I like the Instagram story. I've heard. It's my main way I interact with Instagram. Sure. I, I put up Instagram stories, mostly of like the dogs and shit. Sure, writing you know, a book, yeah. Of Bruce and Bella, which by the way, they got... Haircuts this weekend. They got groomed for real, for real. They, they've gotten a couple of like, you know, intermediary haircuts, mm-hmm. interim haircuts from the girlfriend in in the last few months. But they finally got full blown groomed, and they look like little stuffed animals again. It's the difference in like using your electric razor versus like going to the barber and getting like a straight razor. And then they got the straight razor, or like getting blown out or something. Yeah. I imagine. Well, I've never done that. I don't know what a blowout entails, but I feel like that's what it's like. You come back fluffy as hell. I think. But point being, this weekend I put up an Instagram story that was one of the slides I put up was some chicken Mm -hmm. sizzling on a a skillet, okay? To be clear, not Ross's legs, actual chicken on a skillet. Two pieces of chicken that were being cooked, okay? And and just to be full, full disclosure, okay, I was not like necessarily in charge of this chicken. I was overseeing it for a moment. All right, I was I was left in charge of monitoring the chicken. So you were trying to take credit for somebody else's chicken on your Instagram. Story. I wouldn't say that. Mm. I was doing stuff with the chicken. Okay, I was Whoa. participating in the creation of the meal. Just the chicken itself, and just in general, y'all know I don't know fuck all about cooking. Okay, I'm not a chef. I don't know how to make stuff. All right, it's not my forte. There's not a rat all underneath right? your hat. This is one of the few areas where my parents utterly failed. And wow. it was, it was, and they know this shit. Okay. They don't know, they don't never taught me how to cook, man. My dad taught me like the main meal I know how to make, which is peanut butter and jelly and Cheetos. Mm-hmm. My mom knows she doesn't know how to cook. Mm, sometimes with milk too, if you're feeling frisky. And I know my dad's sitting there right now like, you son of a bitch, you're misrepresenting me. I can cook stuff and he can. The old man can cook. All right. He can make stuff. Got a great chicken spaghetti going. My mom can't cook for fuck. And <laughs> as a result, like I, I, I just, it just never happened for me. So... Overseeing the chicken is like some shit I'm proud of. So I took an Instagram story of it. The thing is, I took the story right after I had flipped this chicken over. And again, keep in mind, I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, sure. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get some credit for having some food on a skillet. I had no idea the amount of heat, no pun intended, that I would take as a result of this fucking chicken slide. I I have received more messages about this chicken now than I have about... The election and the failure of my past company I worked at combined. Thousands of people. Where is the seasoning? Where is the seasoning? Where is the seasoning? All weekend long. I had just flipped it over. The seasoning was on the other side. And more importantly, it ended up being shredded and like used for like a fucking uh, chicken spaghetti, in fact, is what it was. And it, I, like, I don't, again, I don't know. So I'm, I'm having to field all these questions about seasoning I'm like calling at the, my girlfriend. I'm like, why didn't we have seasoning on this chicken? People are upset. She's like, it was on the other side. I don't You're know. Like concerned you, that- she's like, I wasn't even in there. You <laughs> flipped it over. I don't know what the fuck you were doing. She wasn't even in the room. I was left unguarded for like literally seven minutes. And this is this has created a disaster. Hey, just to let you know how far reaching the impacts of that decision made it to, like, I was getting DMs about your chicken. What's wrong strategy. with Ross? What's the deal with this chicken? This is the whitest thing I've ever seen people were saying. It was in a goddamn chicken spaghetti, okay? You nosy cooking snobs. I First mean, I all, just didn't understand the weight of, like, my nutrition decisions at this point. I don't know. Is chicken spaghetti a common thing? I've never in my life heard of anybody that's, make chicken spaghetti. It's like a top three dish for me. Yeah, and maybe it's like a really. I don't. I don't know if it's a, a it's a regional thing or, or what, but my dad crushed chicken spaghetti because his mom crushed chicken spaghetti. But like, girlfriend's family has a chicken spaghetti recipe that they fuck with. Maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's a southern thing. Maybe. Well, let me just say already right off the get like. White people have a terrible reputation with their seasoning of meats, Which right? I found out because a lot of the people that were hollering at me were black people. Yeah. And they were like, y'all have got to stop. And I was like, I never started. 
Bro, like you're offending mm, people. I got with nothing to do with this chicken. No, oh, this, look, all right. this chicken's going in my body. I'm gonna poop this chicken out. Some of it's gonna go to nourishing my no, no, my no, no, organs. No, no, no. You're thinking about this the wrong way, Ross. but that's all I got to do. Thinking with. about this the whole wrong way. See, I wrote my senior thesis paper in high school, my senior project on how food brings us together. Right. So I've looked okay. into the deep psychological needs of the nourishment of the human body and soul, sure. in which cooking for somebody does give those feelings. Right. Sure, sure. So when you have the ability to create a meal that is nourishing somebody's body you are giving them the life force to continue moving you have to put the care into that and the time into I'm that not to treat that you it with the respect it deserves and that chicken breast it lived life as a roaming chicken on this planet just to go on a skillet with one fucking side seasoned did it deserve that life i don't know how seasoning works frankly i've i've seen things marinated i've seen people sprinkle things i've seen salt bay <laughs> I, everybody, I watched Salt Bay. I get it. You fucking, I fucking get it. But it's not my thing. Like, look, I'm not going around DMing all y'all when you spell shit wrong, which is every goddamn day. I'm not going around DMing people or replying anymore when you use the wrong there. That's my thing. I can spell. Y'all can cook. You do your thing, I'll do mine. But for fuck's sake, stay off me with my, ch the, the lack of seasoning on this chicken on God, I don't. I, there was some on the other side. That's all I can say. I promise that is a fact. There was seasoning on the other side. I don't know if it wasn't supposed to be flipped. Again, I was left in charge of this chicken very momentarily, and things went awry. And now we're here. By the way, shouts to people who don't even know what an Instagram story is still. Fair. I went to a COVID wedding this weekend, Chris. Fascinating stuff. A wedding with COVID or a wedding during stuff. COVID? No, a COVID wedding where like everyone is wearing a mask. Sure, sure. The entire ceremony. I just want to make sure not everybody had COVID. No, that'd be a mistake. Uh, we might now, it. but it's po it was like a post-apocalyptic experience. Like sure. sitting there watching a preacher do a wedding ceremony while everybody in the audience is wearing a black monogrammed wedding mask, which classy touch I might add. Um, that but, helps. And for the photos, you've got to have the uniformity masks. with your masks. Sure. I'll give you an example. Stupid dudes who don't think about this type of thing from a photogenic standpoint okay. uh, will roll up with a neon green mask. Like, and you know why? Because I, I did that. Oh, my mask was neon. It's like the f the least casual looking mask I have just happens to be neon green. Okay, so it looks the most professional. And I was like, I'm wearing like a suit. You know? They, oh, sure. I don't sure. know. This looks nicer than it would. Anyway, they had they had that all covered. Nicer than the like monkey grill sock mask, at least. You know, or like the, I mean, this is the Astros one, like I normally rock with. I'm not wearing this to a wedding. If you're watching on YouTube.com/slash Bowling Media, because then I just get shanked when I go to take a piss. And the it's only like, time that's fuck. acceptable is if you wore the matching Astros tie with the face mask to go all yeah, in on Corn Town. But then your Astros guy and, yeah. and people are like, it's not even baseball well, season. I'm just saying, what are you if doing? You're gonna, if you're gonna wear the mask, you just have to go all in. Like there's no other option. And if you want to and I'm like, that's not me. I can't do that. Sure. I don't have that option anymore. I've I just, mean it's nice that you at least know yourself well enough to know that isn't you. Well just value my life enough to sure, where like angry too. Yankees fan in the bathroom, you know, is a thing that I'm I'm trying to avoid. But like there was a there was there was a dude at this wedding, I'm not I'm obviously not saying names here, that uh that doesn't know the difference. Or that didn't know the difference between Instagram and an Instagram story. Okay. So this dude has been doing shit like going jogging and holding the phone and like filming the trail and then putting that up as a post. Ooh. And then on top of that, to make the fucking cherry on top of the pie even sweeter, he fucking only uses hashtags for his captions. Ooh. He didn't even know that you could use like normal sentences and punctuation and shit, which is just hilarious because it also alludes to the fact that this gentleman has never actually looked at anyone else's Instagram posts except for his own, which is just a whole nother level. And I actually respect that, too. But if you've got I used to rip on people who didn't understand like social media, didn't keep up with it. People my age, somewhere around college, I started knowing a couple dudes here and there that like wouldn't update their phone or like didn't know how to use a Mac didn't understand Twitter or what Instagram was, and I used to make fun of those people. Sure. Like, stick with the times. What's your deal? This is where the news is. It's the cutting edge of the world. What's your deal? You're not going to live in the same miserable world as the rest of us. Now I respect these people. Like, good for your disconnected ass. Absolutely. I, I wish our industry didn't revolve so much around social media, but here we are. That's our life, and it's something yeah. that you and I have to learn how to deal with and, and sort of, um, I guess, healthily accept. 
I, I envy that. It's like a respect. At this thing. point in 2020, it takes, I envy the dude who's yep. like, I don't know what an Instagram story is. It takes more effort to not understand Instagram at this point than it does to understand it. And I respect that decision. No, it's a total, total lack of shits given. Like, it's it's an utter lack of effort. Entire like, it does it. It still takes less effort. I assure you, because this is a zero effort situation this gentleman knows nothing about social media and that's the type of person you have to be to get away with this and it's like one of those things where i'll always wonder my whole life probably like what would it have been like if i went into a different field if i didn't do what i do for a living where my life is so engrossed in social media and i am so plugged into everything that's happening all of the time and you have years like 2020 where obviously that becomes less than ideal. Sure. And it's just it's just a fascinating thing to me. So combination of a few things from this weekend. Got went to first wedding of 2020, first time I put on a suit or a jacket or fucking nice shoes, I think even, except for when we dressed up for a stream at one point during the election. I, I had some nice shoes on for a few minutes and then I went, these are uncomfortable, and I took them off. Um Are you sure? I thought you wore sweatpants. I, I might have worn them for a little I, I might have had sweatpants on after after I, mean, I tried the nice shoes okay, on. Okay, sure, sure, sure. But first time wearing oh, a suit, did, went to a like... COVID wedding, got to experience the whole mask and the social distancing at a wedding, which was which was fascinating. And I also, a lot of people I know, you're like, oh my God, how insane do you have to be to have a wedding right now? Well, I thought through that. I thought through that. Sure. And here's the problem. If you really want to have one and circumstances dictated that in this uh, situation, I'm not going to give anybody's personal details out here, but it... it it made sense for them to have one. I'll just put it that way. Mm. It made sense for there to be a ceremony. It made sense for there to be family and friends gathered. It was something that needed to happen for this individual couple. And they did it in a way that was safer. And they did it in, I mean, obviously, hey, let me put it this way. I didn't feel like any more like my odds of getting COVID were higher at this wedding than I did like at a restaurant at any given point. Sure. Which, by the way, it was at a restaurant. So same experience, okay. basically. Yeah. Um, but I was able to like, you know, it's not like there was a dance floor and everybody was yelling at each other and shit like that. Like it was a much more like talking in small groups, lots of people keeping their masks on unless they were drinking, of course. And then I usually get the fuck out of there before everybody's good and belligerent and spitting in your face anyway, because sure. I can't handle it. And the weeds started to wear off. So absolutely. Yeah. Good times. Um, and, and I was going to ask a question about that in terms of weddings for you. Have you noticed, like, were you ever even during build chungus phase and like drinking phase? Were you like dance floor wedding guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that tapered off with you stopping drinking? You see a whole bunch of sober people on, on dance floors just I don't know, going maybe buck like wild. You get funky while you're Hell stoned yes, as hell. yes, it's falling off enormously. Because um, normally people don't get into that part of the night until they're, until they're good hammered. and shit-faced. Sure. And I'll tell you, at that point, I hate all y'all. <laughs> like, <laughs> Bill ain't on the dance floor no more. Um... Nah, man, that's one of the unfortunate things. It's one of like the blessings of alcohol, dancing. Sure. And that that lack of inhibition, where sometimes weed will add inhibition. Like, I'm more, I'm like, <laughs> I'm more likely to be self conscious about my dance moves stoned. I would agree, hundred percent. Drunk, with that. I could give a fuck. But like in college, you'd catch me on my back in the middle of the dance floor, faking a seizure, like having six people dump beers onto my face. That Ross is dead and gone. Sadly, <laughs> he, like, he waved bye bye to us long ago. Um, now I mostly just like sit and listen to people. Yeah. Um, Do you ever get into? It's like, a totally uh, different dynamic for me socially, though, dude. Like sure. I don't talk much because you, you and I's job is so talking heavy. conversation um, heavy. Yeah. That that when I get to enjoy myself in a social setting at this point, I just like listening to people. I man. agree. I don't. Cause I'll like, ask questions and shit, but like I'm just gonna sit there. If well, you don't, spend, if you don't force me, I won't talk. We spend so much time coming up with takes in our own head and coming up with conversation. Yeah, it's like you want to talk. Like pay that. me, bitch. Exactly. Like, can like, I get I some money? Yeah, like <laughs> I, it, it's harder for me outside of the studio to like come up with takes and like have conversations <laughs> and especially without you know. Drinking a little bit or having a toke or something like that. I was going to ask too. People were like, what's up, Ross? I'm like, you want to buy a fucking ad? <laughs> <laughs> on the topic of conversation, you're just handing out cards. Like, hey, listen to the podcast. Just listen. You want my take? Here, listen to this podcast. You can get an ad read in response to ask me how my weekend went. <laughs> um, in, in regards to smoking at weddings and like conversation based and stuff like that, what's your level of acceptance to when drunk person wants to have deep conversation with you? <laughs> Now, yeah, there is. That's not a thing. Okay, okay. 
drunk person comes up to me and tries to have a conversation, period, uh, that's very short-lived. Deep conversation? Bro, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I dealt with dudes at the fantasy football weekend, like, trying to talk to me about, like, I'm telling you, man, you don't, I don't have that depth anymore. Sure. That is not a thing that exists socially for me. Like, if you are not my mom, my dad, my brother, my grandma, my coworker, or my girl, you are not getting that level of, of, of conversation with me right now, especially in 2020. Sure. If somebody tries to break off a serious conversation right now, there's like a 75% chance that's about something I don't want to talk about. So yeah, probably, that's And that's me being real generous with that percentage, so. I'm definitely drunk, uh, deep talker, but like I've noticed everybody that- Everybody is. As I've gotten- Everybody is, it sucks. As I've gotten like more confident in myself and strong in my own opinions, I'm just less apologetic about it. Like if somebody doesn't agree with me, I'm just like, all right, well, that's my take. There you go, enjoy it. Sorry. Yeah, that's I don't why try, I just, I just don't try to appease there. people anymore. I just run for if anybody tries to hit me with a drunk take now, I just sprint for the hills. And I try not to distribute takes publicly. You gotta pay for this. Without payment. Cut the fucking check. Speaking of which, RBP349 is brought to you by Honey. Imagine this. You're making a list of the gifts you're gonna buy for the holidays, and then someone randomly gives you the money to help you buy one. Oh. Does that sound good? Well, that's what Honey is doing. They're helping pay for $1 million worth of gifts. You're probably wondering, is this the same Honey that automatically searches for promo codes online that I've heard Ross discuss in the past? Yes! Yes, it is. With Honey, you can also make a list of all the holiday gifts you want from certain stores, and Honey will email you when the price drops on anything on your list. Just add Honey to your computer, create a free account, and they'll throw some holiday gifts on your drop list for a chance to win. Honey will randomly select winners and give them money to help buy something on their list as part of this $1 million giveaway worth of gifts. No purchase necessary. You need a PayPal account to redeem the prize. Only valid in the U.S. Giveaway ends 12-21-2020. I'm crushing all my Christmas shopping, utilizing Honey. You should, too. Support the show. Save yourself some dough. Get Honey for free. It's free. You just download, go to honey.com, joinhoney.com slash Ross. Excuse me, that's joinhoney.com slash R-O-S-S. Get honey, start shopping, and start saving. And also, you can join their uh, giveaway. Huzzah! Huzzah! Joinhoney.com slash Ross. Now time for some announcements and shouts. It is almost vaccine season, according to the news. That's huge. Congratulations, everyone. We're doing it. Strap the fuck in and stay home for a little while, eh? Says the guy who just got back from a wedding. Uh, DJ Screw passed 20 years ago today. Today. DJ Screw. A lot of y'all don't know who he is. That's fine. It's not your fault. You're just young. And not from Houston. Or Texas. Or the South. A lot of people know about him. A lot of people don't. But he was a massive influence on hip-hop all around the country. Uh, and globe. And not just in the South. See ASAP Rocky, for example. That's, like, that's a New York rapper. Whose career wouldn't exist. If DJ screwed in, the, the, most like of a, his album will be like screwed and chopped at different points. He just utilizes a lot of the, the style oh, sure. that, that Screw introduced to the game. I heard something very upsetting this weekend in regard to DJ Screw and the TikTok generation. Okay. That they are apparently, um, I guess, how do I put this? They're misappropriating uh, the legacy of screwed and chopped music. There was this huge battle in Houston as a result of DJ Screw inventing what was called Screwed and Chopped, which Can is you where give me you the would breakdown? hear it yeah. very slowed down. So instead of talking at the normal speed, shit gets really sleek and slow. Sure. And Screw did that and made it popular and made a ton of tapes and would slang them out of his car. There's actually like a biopic or, or a, a visual tribute coming out at some point soon to this dude. Um... But that element of music where, like, the rap would be a normal speed and then all of a sudden it would slow down a whole lot. Okay. He would do whole songs that were slow, whole albums where every song, so rappers would record a song and then send it to Screw and he'd screw and chop it. Yeah. He'd they, slow it down and, and, and do all the crazy production shit and he... And he it's gotten really big in, like, uh, the, like, I don't really know what kind of rap genre you want to call this, but let's say, like, the Juice World, Lil Peep, like, Lil Pump type of or not low pump but like that type of more like let's say grunge rap in a sense and uh they've gotten really into like they just call it like slowed and reverbed but like, yep same there it is thing. slowed and reverbed yeah is the version of this that the tiktok kids have got going um it's just the same exact thing it's screwed and chopped and there was even a point in houston culture houston hip-hop culture where other producers were doing like 
chopped and slopped versions of songs. There was this whole, like, trying not giving credit where it was due situation. Anyway, I was reading about that and how now the TikTok generation has slowed and reverbed. And they don't even, they're not even familiar with where that came from. So there's, like, this effort to try and give credit to where it's due. So DJ Screw, R.I.P. to you. Yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I've listened to plenty of slow and reverb songs. I had no idea that he was the innovator of that. Slow and reverbed sounds. Not as good as slopped and chopped. <laughs> Silly as hell. Screwed and chopped. Screwed and chopped. Screwed and chopped. I'll never forget again. Or screwed again. and chopped. Coles, you've got some shouts. Hit I do. Shouts to my best friend, Jake. Happy Jake. 22nd, brother. Thank you so much for all your support along the way, man. I really appreciate that. Can't Jakey, wait to get Jakey. home and celebrate with you over Thanksgiving. About to bake, make a big mistake -y. <laughs> Probably. You that's, never know. That's a very bad line from not another teen movie. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead, Cole. You're asking the wrong person there. And uh, shouts to F1 driver Lewis Hamilton for tying Michael Schumacher's seven world titles in yesterday's race. As a oh. black man in the sport of F1, which is very rare, might I add, he is an inspiration for many people in the world. Massive congratulations to him on his seventh world title. Another huzzah. Another huzzah. Lewis Hamilton. Huge. If you want to watch our show, not just listen, you can do so at YouTube.com slash Bolin Media, where every episode of RBP every Monday and Wednesday goes up for your visual enjoyment uh we've got a great new setup here at permanent record studios in austin texas and we'll be uh adding some more decorations as we continue to build this bad boy out so stoked for y'all to be here shouts to everybody watching on youtube.com slash bowling media speaking of which if you want to see us live you can do that tonight monday night 7 p.m central actually we, well we will be live at seven but we're going live earlier than that um on twitch.tv slash boss rolling that's Ross Bolin with the B and the R reversed. Twitch.tv slash Boss Rolling. Coles and I are up on uh, Cold War now. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War dropped, what, over the weekend? Last week? End of last uh, week, excuse me. Yeah, end of last and, week. And uh, Chris and I had our stream last night. Sunday evening, we usually do a stream. And, uh, oh my God, it is very, 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 very fun. So if you have the opportunity, tune in this evening. Monday evening, November 16th. Chris and I will be live again. You can watch us, see our faces. We interact with chat. We answer questions. We have discussions. We play with podcast listeners. And we've got the new Black Ops Cold War uh, playing a lot of zombies. The shit is insane. We had a lot of fun last night, though. So come through tonight, and we'll be live at a, another point later on this week. Check in on social media to see when else we go live this week. But tonight, Monday night, for sure, twitch.tv slash boss rolling. Thank you very much to everybody who's come through. Now it's time for our first segment. Huzzah! Pope Francis horny. <laughs> um, I, I, look, Pope Francis, he's the Bishop of Rome, the head of the Catholic Church, sovereign of the Vatican City State, the first Jesuit Pope, the first from the Americas, the first from the Southern Hemisphere, the first Pope from outside Europe since the Syrian Gregory III who reigned in the 8th century. Pope Francis also very... Very horny, it turns Very out. Very horny, yeah. Pope Francis is H in the chat. Over the weekend, he was caught liking an Instagram model uh, by the name of at Nata got Natagata. Natagata? Natagata. That's what it is. Natagata. Um, she's an Instagram model. She's like a 27-year-old Instagram model. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pope Francis's account, as you know. So, like, here's essentially what happened or what, I, what I'm able to surmise. Sure. Natagata. Former college student and or former college age female. She was at one point college age. She's 27 now. Okay. Okay. As most people, she aged normally. When she was in college, Nada, Natalia, Natalia Garaboto, Garaboto, mm -hmm. Tomo Arigato, Mr. Mr. Roboto. Robot. Uh, Natalia Garaboto, at one point, she was in college and she was, um, let me, like, I worked at a company that most people are familiar with that ran a college-aged humor site aimed at the college demographic and specifically sorority and fraternity dudes in, in that culture, okay? And we had a, a sub-brand just for females. Like, you know how Barstool does smoke shows? Yes. And that was one of the first things that blew up with them. We had, like, a girl Instagram page. It was just for, like, hot college chicks. That was it, basically. That was, that was as complicated as the idea got. We put up hot college chicks on this Instagram page. It'd be wild. This was like seven years ago. Okay, keep in mind, this was semi-original at that point. This it was, was like us and Barstool, yeah. and that was it. And this chick 
was one of the girls that used to submit her shit routinely, okay? So when I saw Pope Francis' shit break over the weekend, and I, then I saw the picture, and then I saw the name, I was like, oh my God. Because suddenly it occurred to me that you were basically the enabler for I Horny Pope. I could be indirectly responsible, or even directly responsible, it could be argued. It definitely could be argued. For the horniness of the Pope. Well, not necessarily the horniness of the, horniness of the Pope, but you enabled him to be able to show hey off man, his horniness. Secondarily, Pope H, because of Bill. And here's my point. So during that time period, Barstool, us, so we would follow these different models, right? Sure. On our, from those accounts, not our personal accounts, from the Barstool account, from the TFM account, from those accounts. We, they, they follow all kinds of different people to get more attention, right? So, but when you follow somebody, if I follow you. Okay. And then I scroll past a Sports Illustrated photo that you've liked of Cam Newton. Yeah. Back in a Panthers jersey. Yeah. And it'll show me. Hey, look, Chris C. 99. Likes this He liked post. this photo. Yeah. Because I follow you and I follow Sports Illustrated. Well, because Barstool followed the Pope, because he's the Pope, and Nata Gata, because she was Nata Gata, and at one point was submitting photos to Barstool and the likes of uh, TFM Girls, etc. Um, they were able to see that Pope had liked this photo of her, and like yes. a little Catholic schoolgirl, a little fake little skirt with like little, the booty out, you know? The butt was out. And Pope H, as a result. Yeah, dude, I kept waiting for something, to, something or someone to, to come say, out yeah. and say something like, "Nah, this is fake." Like, this it was is Photoshop. Photoshop. Like, don't believe this. It was et cetera, an et intern. Nothing, nothing. Not one. No. Th- I couldn't find anything. It turns from out, the church. Mainstream media was like what, doing the exact same thing Chris was, and I and honestly, I had the same thought. When I first saw the story, I was like, "Ah, they'll probably have some like or maybe, explanation." Yeah, I was th- I was waiting on something in the in the sense of like we have somebody running this account who accidentally liked this, like on it an was a horny, page. it was a horny cardinal, so, yeah, or like somebody had access to the account that thought they thought it was their person, something, anything, nothing, just, bro, they nothing. Just, they the just Vatican let it happen. Out a statement. It just says, Pope. Homie had to come out last week after being celebrated for his statement on same-sex marriages or relationships, only to backtrack on that. So he was already in hot water. And then simultaneously liking a sexy Catholic schoolgirl Instagram model. Because, Ross, you know, the Catholic Church just needed more horniness in chat. You know what I mean? They really needed one more creepy, horny headline to put up there, you know? Uh Just to add to the pile of trash that is 2020. No wonder we have reverends fucking on altars with BDSM models. Their boss is dropping hints from the top rope. Yeah, and and y'all know the Pope uh, meme that went viral where it's th- there's four squares and it's three squares on yeah. the Pope and he's holding something up. Couldn't with have his been eyes more timely for everyone to see. And then now this chick's ass is there. Couldn't have been I more mean, it's, timely. It's just phenomenal. And frankly, this isn't shocking. As somebody who grew up in the church and is more than familiar with the way that. Catholicism works, uh, that the Catholic Church is set up, um, the rules that they have for their priesthood, and the and the way those rules have impacted our society over the course of thousands of years. Uh, it, it has never been good. Never. Hey, making, it, making it a rule that priests can't have sex or get married probably wasn't... Has backfired horribly. Quite, quite a few times. In every possible way to the lowest possible level, which is obviously pedophilia. So... It's not been great, and and this is just it kind of shows you the the where the issues lie. Like if the po- first of all, the Pope shouldn't be on the ground, dude. Like this is the fucking thing. The Pope he should, should be in be, a position. The Pope should be like the cat at this wedding that didn't give a fuck and didn't even know the difference between an Instagram story. The Pope should be focused on other shit. This is this is just a the Instagram thought, dog. Like the Pope, the Pope. How if the Pope. If the Pope, if the Pope can't handle this, what do you think 90% of married dudes are doing? How do you think that's going? How do you think Instagram is influencing our relationships? If the Pope can't not double-click the booty. Hey, one, one thing on the bright side of this, though. Punch your ticket to heaven. I've heard this is now one of the commandments, you know? Thou shalt not murder. Thou shall wingman for horny pope. She's putting a copy of Pelican Brief in her locker. That's a book. I, the skirt doesn't even get to her ass. Has, uh, has the photo just been up full screen on your computer the entire time? There's, there's no way to prove that. There's no reflectors behind me. So no, I'm going to say no. Okay. The answer is no. Just curious. 
The answer to that question. I mean, you do you, man. If it's is no research purposes and everything, you know, really got to get familiar. <clears throat> Pope Francis horny, Michael. <laughs> I can hear. <laughs> I can hear Mike laughing on the other side of the wall. Oh, man. RBP 348 is brought to you by Bird Dogs, makers of the most comfortable all-purpose shorts in the fucking world. You can literally wear them to do anything, anywhere, at any time. What are Bird Dogs? They're built-in gym, or gym shorts with a built-in silky soft inner liner that makes underwear obsolete. Now they make pants with built-in underwear. And without it. If you're afraid of change, you fucking coward. They're the most breathable, social event-friendly, golfing your dick off pants you've ever owned. Seriously, though, they are great for the golf course or the office or a nice meal out on the town. They look great. Nobody will even know you're a thousand times more comfortable than they are in your bird dogs. You could literally get away with wearing them to a wedding if you had to, and it'll feel like you're wearing nothing downstairs, like you're walking around half nude, like Winnie the Pooh, just being Pooh Bear. Just and they dry. It up. Yeah, exactly. They dry faster than a bathing suit, bird dogs. You could work out in them or play golf in them. Get all sweaty and shit, jump straight into the pool, get out, dry off in the sun, wear them to drive around in your Tesla because you have a Tesla now, then drive that Tesla back home and wash it with your golden retriever, Elvis, because you're wearing bird dogs, and bitch, you can do anything. Go to birddogs.com into the promo code RBP when you check out, and they'll throw in a free pair of nunchucks because you need those. Because you need nunchucks in 2020 to defend yourself in your homestead. That's birddogs.com, code RBP, boom. Free nunchucks with your order. Enjoy your bird dogs. You will never want to take them off. They're a safe space for all your most valuable possessions. Next segment, checking in on rat bastard Tim Allen. Over the weekend, America's favorite rat bastard still barely edging out Takashi 69 Tim Allen, formerly known as Tim the Toolman Taylor, made news uh, after he engaged in Marxist humor. Marxist Twitter commentary, I would call it. Um... On, on on the Twitter machine over the weekend. Tim Allen is known as a conservative guy. Sure. Uh, and that's cool. Like, whatever. Like, that, that needs to exist. Like, he's like the dude version of Roseanne or some shit, right? Um, and he's he's been known to, tr- like, Fox News put up this headline to let you kind of know where Tim Allen sits with the media, okay? Tim Allen trolls progressives with 172-year-old, quote, Okay. Nice. He says, on Friday, he trolled his social media followers in the capitalist in the capitalist nation with a joke about Marxism. Is that what the U.S. now? Just the capitalist nation? We're just, that's, that's what we are? I guess. Comedian Tim Allen once had a joke. This is a fucking worst column ever written. <laughs> I'm just going to read the whole thing. It's by Frank Miles. Thanks, Frank. Comedian Tim Allen once had a joke about the state of American manhood. Two options, work or jail. On Friday, he trolled his social media followers in the capitalist nation with a joke about Marxism. This is the tweet. Finally, an honest progressive position. And then it's a quote. Short-term demands among them a progressive income tax, abolition of inheritances and private property, abolition of child labor, free public education, nationalization of the means of transport. And he put, guess who wrote this? Okay. He then decided to source the quote but with more than one tweet because of a misspelling. First one says, Karl Marx, Communist Manifesto, Wikipedia. And then it follows up, oops, Karl, with a K. The first one was, was, uh, had a C accidentally. Sure, sure. Or on purposely. This whole column, this whole story, probably the tweet itself, it's an ad. It's an ad for Last Man Standing because its upcoming ninth season is about to start. I'm serious. The whole fucking thing. I think he tweeted it just to be have something to make a headline out of so Fox could run this stupid 30-word article about about this new season of this show coming out. I don't understand. How is this trolling progressives? I don't know. I don't, like, what? It's a How joke. A... It, he was trying to say, hey, you know where some of these concepts that Democrats love now have been seen before? Karl Marx. That okay. was the joke. What? It, it, That's I, a I, horrible fucking joke. Somebody that invented the, the or somebody that manifested left wing policies is probably going to have left wing policies. Yeah, but nice, in general, man. Marxist stuff seen as un American. Sure. Historically. And um, so reading this column, I was laughing my dick off just because I was like, this is so stupid. But then it's li- it's like, and it's just so, pr- it's just such a lazy attempt. It's really bad. And then it gets into the show, and I'm like, okay, I want to hear what this is. What's the What's the premise? For this this show that he's doing now, okay? The show follows the exploits of successful family man Mike Baxter, played by Tim Allen, as he navigates life as a particularly macho man who is also a married father of three adult daughters. So basically they took Tim home Allen. improvement and they made it daughters instead of sons. And they were like, we'll do three instead of two. And that's the show. That's yeah. it. 
I've seen like one episode of this. It's pretty terrible. Here's what'll blow your fucking mind. They've run 194 episodes. And uh, after it switched to Fox, it became the most watched Friday regular comedy telecast in 15 years. You know, you know exactly why, Ross? This show was made for 50-year-old plus white men that yes. want that yes. voted for Trump. Probably. Well, well maybe Fox not all of them for the most part. Now I don't know what. Now we're seeing that shift completely thanks to the okay, things maybe. we discussed okay. last week. By the way, I got a DM from an angry mother about promoting parlay. Oh, serious? You from, saw from yeah a, from yeah. A, a, a mother of a black listener. No, I saw it. I saw it on the. Uh, it was on and the was like, Ross Bowen account, whoa. and you're like, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, 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 we were not promoting it. We, if we anything, were, we were calling to uh, calling, advise, calling out some of the issues yeah, with it. <laughs> you know, be cautious on this thing. Yo, I was very confused by that take. Last thing I want to say about Tim Allen, the rat bastard. Yeah, of course. Everybody that doesn't remember or has never heard the episode where we discussed Tim Allen, just Google the Ross Bolin podcast, Tim Allen Rat, and find the episode. I think it literally is titled Tim Allen is a Rat Bastard. I think it is, yes. Um, I'll just pull it up Does for Tim y'all, Allen sure. ever play a role that isn't Tim Allen? Episode 102. No, he does not. Unless, I would argue, Buzz Lightyear. Okay, that doesn't count, though. Come on. Because the sa- I, But if you're going to count any of his shit, he's basically the same Tim Allen and everything. Buzz Lightyear at least has a little stank on him. A little different personality. Yeah, but that's because he finally went, like, was was because at a animated. competent studio that gave him good lines. I just and mean, like, well-written dude, well, animation. He's, and... he's in good shit. Like, The Santa Claus is a great movie. Bro. Okay, that's true. That's it's true. It's just he's still being exactly the character he always is. Yeah. Whereas Buzz Lightyear has got some, like, he's a fucking space cowboy, basically. You know? An astronaut? Space cowboy. Sure. Sure. I think Woody was the cowboy and he was, you know, space cowboy works great. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that works. Uh, speaking of which, his Twitter bio is like on another level of stunting, Tim Allen. It's just, yeah, I mean, like, it's the same one that every dad has. No, it says Santa, Buzz Lightyear, the tool man, Mike Baxter. Hey, I'm still that wisecracking kid from the Midwest looking for answers to life's big question. It's- uh, the only reason that's a little funky is because we all know about Tim. We talked about him in episode 102. Tim Allen is a rat bastard. He got caught slanging cocaine and was going to get life. So he ratted out a bunch of other people and then he became the tool man. That's random. That's weird. Also, his Twitter bio, that's what it says, right? The photo for his like actual Twitter avatar is him in like a leather jacket just looking like a tool, like a generic fucking shot that he got from a professional photographer. But his cover art is dope. It's okay. the Santa Claus photoshopped with Buzz Lightyear, and that's just kind of like a, a, a stunt that I can respect. It's just that he's... We all know, Tim. Like, you can't put... You're the wisecracking kid from the Midwest looking for answers to life's big questions when at one point that path... Um, involved getting several other people locked the fuck up. You rat bastard. Anyway, that was checking in with rat bastard Tim Allen. And RBP 349 is also brought to you by the NLL, the National Lacrosse League. As listeners of my show, you know how much Coles loves lacrosse. Also, many of my closest friends are lax freaks, and you know how much I respect lettuce and flow and spooning. Well, yeah, Chris, of course. now we're sponsored by the National Lacrosse League, which is absolutely huge. Tell us about the NLL, Coles. I mean, as I've mentioned before, lacrosse was my sport growing up. I played it pretty much four seasons a year, um, and indoor lacrosse was one of those seasons. Mostly we played it in the winter, and that's what the NLL is, the National oh, Lacrosse yeah. League. It's box lacrosse. It's much tighter, smaller, smaller court, tight, and tight, tight. enclosed, so you have walls surrounded on all sides. Think hockey, but on turf, wearing pretty much the same pads. But you have a two-pound rubber ball that moves at about 110 miles an hour and no, from up to and 15 no skates. feet. No skates. No skates. No skates on turf. Regular shoes. Lots of fighting, Cleats. though. Great lettuce. Beautiful spoons. Mm. Lots of twirling. Mm. Best le- Probably best hair in the game, I would say. You know, we're big Philadelphia Wings fans. Lifetime. Over here. Lifelong. Yeah, yeah. lifelong. Lifelong uh, Philadelphia Wings fan. Everybody knows that about Chris and I. Tough last year, but, you know, we're coming back strong in 2021. Chris is wearing his Philadelphia Wings merchandise right now. Absolutely. And, I mean, let me just say... Look at this logo. I mean, I look regal, I would say. How does Majestic. it feel? How do you feel, though? Strong, like Iron Stronger Man, Stronger than normal. I think I could yeah. shoot a laser out of my chest right now. Just, I'm, well, oh, no, I'm, I can't do it right <laughs> now. The huge thing. I'm heating up. The huge news here is that now you can get official National Lacrosse League gear, gear fan gear, from Fanatics, the official shop for National Lacrosse League fan gear. 
whoever you root for, wherever you live, Fanatics. You show your team pride all day, every day with certified NLL gear. They've got hoodies. Coles is wearing one right now. Shirts, half-zip sweatshirts, long sleeves, hats, scarves, and of course jerseys. For me, it's all about finding the highest quality Philadelphia Wings merch. As Coles said, we are lifelong Philadelphia Wings fans here. We need our fan gear to keep up, and we get it from Fanatics with all the rest of the NLL stuff. And all their products is uh, priced fairly, made to last. Beautiful hoodie, comfortable hoodie. Chris is wearing it. You're watching it. YouTube.com slash Bowling Media. Get, get you one. Get you one. Stay warm and spoon hard this winter. I do spoon harder in this hoodie, let me add. Yeah. What also, a uh, huge move for the, you Texas people out there. Fort Worth is getting an expansion expansion team in the NLL. So if you haven't had a, if you haven't been lucky enough like us to be in lifelong Philadelphia Wings fans, of course, mm. you now have a new team to pull for. Good for you, Fort Worth. You needed something. Now you've got that. Whether you're getting ready for the 2021 NLL season or shopping for a fan in your life for the holidays, Fanatics ships gear right to your door. Get in there and grab yourself some NLL gear. National Lacrosse League gear, 25% off when you use the code BOLIN at shopnll.com slash BOLIN. That's 25% off. Code BOLIN at shopnll.com slash BOLIN. Next segment. Grab your light. This is stop the Wikipedia when you hide. Stop the Wikipedia when you're high. Today we have two. Two. It's a twofer. It's a Monday twofer. Our first one is tight. If you're one of the millions of people watching the Queen's Gambit right now, I got started this weekend. Sure. I'm on like episode. Five. Okay. I'm not going to give any spoilers, obviously, if you're not watching The Queen's Gambit on Netflix yet. Surely you're aware of it at this point. It's become sort of a social phenomenon in terms of uh, TV shows in 2020. I would yeah. say it is the hottest we have seen. This has been a difficult year. I would say well-reserved or well-deserved, too. Yes, I would say so as well. Shows, though, difficult year in terms of picking up the kind of steam that Queen's Gambit has because as we are more fraction fractured, excuse me, um, socially, as we don't have all the events, the dinners, the the bars, the things that we used to do that resulted in word of mouth about sure. shows so that we would all end up watching, or you know, you'd see these waves on the same shows, right? Or the same documentaries or whatever. There's been less of that, so it's been a lot more segmented. And um, this is the first thing I've really seen, other than like The Boys Season 2, where it feels like, it, and this is bigger than that, much bigger, I think, at this point. I would point, agree, yeah. Um, where it feels like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people are obsessed with it. And so many people binged it in like a day. I've literally watched it in one day. People that don't even watch TV shows, though. Like, I've heard from a lot of people, like, my mom hasn't watched a show since, you know, fucking I Love Lucy. And she watched this in eight day, hours. And yeah, I'm like, god yeah. damn. Like, she fast forwarded some of it while she was. It's crazy. Um, so the Queen's Gambit has become huge. I, f I finally got to the point over the weekend where we spoke about it on Oysters, Clans, and Cockles a couple weeks ago. Barrett had started watching it. He pitched me on it. Yeah. He pitched me on it as sexy chess, okay? If you're not watching Queen's Gambit, sexy chess is I how agree. I was pitched on it, and I stand by that pitch because it ended up working out for me. So good job, Barrett. Um, the show is phenomenal. It's, it's awesome. Again, I can't say much else about it. I don't want to do any spoilers here, uh, except that I have popped... A lot of pills in my life, and mm -hmm. sadly do not recall ever playing anything on the ceiling. Except replaying past mistakes. Just past mistakes, yeah. 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 Um, but the Queen's Gambit's incredible. Highly recommend it. Definitely going to be discussing more on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, our television and film podcast here at Bowling Media that you can subscribe to wherever you listen to RBP. First stuff to Wikipedia when you're high for today is Ossip Bernstein. Ossip. Like gossip without the G. Let me just say, great name. It's an excellent name to like call out for somebody. It makes me think of Aesop. Also, like Aesop's fables. Okay. Do you know what sure. that is? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Stories. But it's awesome. Stories, books, manuals, everything. What books? What manuals? What manuals? But yeah, also, I mean, he was a Russian, uh, French chess player mm -hmm. born in Russia when it was still the Russian uh, feder or whatever it was when it was a czar ship, when it had kings and queens and those types of things. Um, and he was a very, very good chess player. He was a grandmaster, in fact. Cabbages and kids. And he's I think you just accidentally said a line from uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland, oddly enough. Kings and queens and those type of things. Go ahead. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I haven't seen Alice in Wonderland in a hot minute. You just fired off like a whole song in my head. Like it's, nostalgia it's hit? honestly a problem the at the moment. Nostalgia I'm, pill hit you? Yeah, I'm fighting to get through it. Wow. So that I can get back to my normal thoughts. Do you want to just start singing real quick? No, I don't think I can. I don't think I should, okay. Chris. I really don't. I'll just keep going. You continue to. And cover if you what need to bust out in song at any time, I'll. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll give you a wink. 
Um, so the, fa- the reason he's our stuff to Wikipedia when you're high today, the famous story from 1918, right after the Bolshevik res- Revolution, when the uh, communists were originally taking over the government and they kicked out the czarship of Russia. Bolshevik. Our boy Osip was arrested because he, at the time, was a... Um, Basically like an advisor to a banker, and they were trying to overthrow all the capitalist and uh, money-making facilities of Russia at the time. And anybody involved with that was pretty much r- rounded up by the Russian secret police and executed. Shot. Yeah, so shot. he was a Lots legal of- advisor to bankers, and as a result, he rounded was- up by the Bolshevik secret police. Absolutely. You say Osip, I'll say Osip. Go ahead. Osip, Osip. Who potatoes, gives a shit? Potatoes, you know, pretty green, much. Yellow jacket, gold jacket, green jacket, who gives a shit? Pretty much the same thing, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, so he was rounded He was rounded up by the secret police at the time, and um, the lieutenant of the squad that had rounded him up was- So they line everybody up against yes. the wall, and they're about to shoot everyone. Yes, there's like 30 people that they have about to shoot people, and right before the firing squad opens fire, the lieutenant of the squadron asked to see a list of the names of all the people that they're about to shoot. Being which a is, big fan, just a fucking weird, wild move. thing. Yeah, wild thing to want oh. to know the names of the people you're about to shoot. Hold on there, Christopher. Don't give the order yet. Let me see that list. I want to know names. I want to know, know everybody the name I'm of about each to one of these poor sons of bitches that's about to die. So I can remember hand. them okay. for the rest of my entire life. And then he hit the name Ossip and went, "Hold, please." Holy shit! That's a grandmaster. Yeah, he realized this dude. Uh, He's a big chess fan. Big chess guy. Uh, apparently, head of the firing squad into chess enough to notice that Ossip was this Russian French chess player. That he at the time just Russian, flees to France post this happening okay. because you know didn't want to die. So Russian yeah. at this point, chess player. Yes. So the corporal at the time he asked uh Osip uh Bernstein if he to prove himself basically. It's like if you are this grandmaster Are you this famous chess master? Play me in a game of chess. And if you win this game of chess then you can walk away with your life. But if you lose or draw, we shoot you. And what I'm curious about is, like, was he... Because, I, you know, that concept makes sense. But did the rest of the dudes in the line have to, like, stand there and watch, and watch. this game unfold? Or did they get shot real quick and then Ossip had to play? Because then also that's, like, a whole mental nut, like pretzel you've put that man in. You just shot everybody and, like, he knows what's going to happen to him if he doesn't win this chess game. You know, there's 50 dead bodies. I I need to know situationally, like, what happened here, but they don't have that kind of detail. They every every move he made, they shot another person. So they had to win saying, the game like, as quickly as possible. What, what? And then were the rest of the soldiers like, are you fucking serious? They're like, dork-ass to commander's going to fucking... stop, stop yeah, our yeah. execution and play a game of chess with this These guy? Are we're like... trying to bring down the fucking financial institutions here. These are, like, literally, like, the Workers' Party communist revolutionaries, and they're watching this rich-ass commander... Hold! Play You're the fire. like the oldest, richest game in Russian history. Rook to knight seven. Pa. Scat. Pa. Scat. Anyway, he won. Well, Ossip was a he was a noted, uh, very aggressive chess player. One time in one of his earliest matches, even being quoted as uh, he was given the option, or he gave his partner the option to resign. Sorry, his partner gave him the option to resign after twelve moves. Because his partner had taken a very obvious lead, and also thinking that he had the chance to come back and win, eventually, uh, 20 moves later, gave his partner again the chance for him to resign. He said no, because he was about to lose, and he kicked Awesome's ass. So Awesome had a lot riding on this. As an aggressive chess player, comes out, whoops his ass, walks away with his life, yeah, he flees gets Russia, he goes es- to France. He escapes on a British ship and settles in Paris. And uh, by the way, he was born in Zitomir. It's a Russian empire to a family of Jewish heritage. He grew up in, uh, wait, oh, he earned a doctorate in law at Heidelberg University in 1906, became a financial lawyer, and then this stuff unfolded. I guess at some point along the way, he was a chess master. I feel like grandmaster isn't really something you do on the side, but shouts to him for that. Listen to this from his Wikipedia. He w- Bernstein was a successful businessman who earned considerable wealth before losing it in the Bolshevik Revolution. Mm. He earned a second fortune. That was lost in the Great Depression. Mm. And a third mm. that was lost when France was invaded by Nazi Germany in 1940. Holy was, fucking shite. I was going to ask. like if we built out Bolin Media and then there was a revolution and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, we'll swing again. And then we did another successful thing and then like we got invaded by Nazis. And then we did another one, and I was getting challenged to play chess in an alley where everyone else was being shot. I was gonna, I was, I was kind of curious when he, when you said he was born to Jewish heritage, uh, the decision to move to France in the 1930s, you know, 
tough life there. Hindsight. Tough time to 2020. be. 2020. Yeah. Tough Hindsight. time to be in France in the 40s. Crazy, though. Chess-related story of chess saving this man, Ossip Bernstein's life uh, after he was almost murdered by Bolsheviks. I love chess. When I was younger, I used to imagine like great wars of the past were just fought via love, chess. Dude. I said on Twitter, man, like a hundred bucks in person. Though I'm not doing no internet chess, I will play anybody, anybody for a hundred dollars in chess. We Any need to play human some being. chess. I'm in. We should do chess. On, live I've got on that stream. board, dude. I've I know got a nasty you do have a board. sick board. We might have to stream some twi- uh, some chess live on Twitch. It might even be hilarious if we got some Austin listeners to throw down and like legitimately come over and challenge us. Did like a chess tournament and then just literally murder them and wear their skin. Yeah, we need to find some tranquilizers first. Yeah. Here's your second so. stuff to Wikipedia when you're high for today. It's British Airways Flight 5390. It's a fast one, and it's insane. My dad sent me a link to a tweet over the weekend that brought me to this stuff to Wikipedia when you're high. But it, British Airways Flight 5390 was a flight from Birmingham Airport in England um, that's, that was headed to Spain. It suffered an explosive decompression with no loss of life shortly after takeoff on the 10th of June in 1990. Okay, so I was three years old when this happened. It was an improperly installed windscreen panel separated from its frame, causing the plane's captain to be blown partially out of the aircraft. And this is where the tweet comes in. My dad sent me this tweet over the weekend that is a series of photos. Wild photos. Of the captain in the cockpit, his co-pilot, and then the captain literally hanging on for dear life out the window of this plane. Someone is grabbing his legs, and he's like folded back over the top. Because he got sucked out the front of the fucking airplane. A dude is literally holding him by the fucking feet to keep him in board. Uh, the tweet is from David Ferrier, at David Ferrier. It says, in 1990, the window of a plane fell off and one of the pilots got sucked out, so they just held onto his legs while the plane landed. It's a well-documented story, um, a favorite of his, and it is insane. The rest of which I will uh, continue to tell you, I suppose. 35 minutes outside right the window. You want to hear the rest? Thirty-five of the fucking minutes. Wow, that's a that's like a Tom Cruise stunt in a Mission Impossible movie that this dude pulled Could off. Could you in, imagine in IRL being exposed to two hundred mile an hour winds outside of the front of it? Like I'm seeing for thirty-five minutes. I'm seeing minutes? Thirty minutes. I, who knows? But any amount of minutes, frankly, one minute hanging out the top of an airplane as it tries to go land, and you're flailing out the top, and your boys are holding onto your feet is insane. Yeah. No, absolutely. I could. I genuinely couldn't even imagine what goes through somebody's mind with like the Dude, sensory see, overload you have to just i can't imagine like did you he think cast away just passed out pass out nah, i'm I've guessing because of the g-force castaway there's like a similar um situation where the, the airplane loses pressure okay and he has to like get out um it's different nobody well people are getting sucked out you'll get sucked out it's from hook uh where's my air where's my uh What's it called when you jump out of an airplane? You pull a parachute. Where's my parachute, Jackie? You ever seen Hook? We're just gonna ask you what movies you've seen the rest of the show today. And I'm just gonna keep disappointing you. You haven't seen Hook seen though? No. Oh man, I gotta show you Hook. Some of these movies, my my only purpose in life at this point is to get them spread to the to the younger to generation, the to the youth of America. The only time that I like, we Hook one time I remember we went to Blockbuster with my dad, and we went to go rent a movie. And they were like, yo, you can't rent this movie until you pay your, like, $120 in late fees. Yeah, they And my do that. dad was like, nah, fuck that. And Y'all are going think, bankrupt soon, and he peaced. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the last time that uh, I rented a movie for, like, six years. So I think, like, six years of my childhood, I just watched, like, Disney on TV movies over and over again. Um, so this captain survived, the guy that was sucked out and was held by his feet. But he had frostbite, okay. bruising. Was obviously in pretty severe shock, and he fractured his right arm, his left thumb, and his right wrist. It's actually not bad. Another guy dislocated his shoulder and had frostbite on his face with damage to one eye, and there were no other major injuries. The fact that everybody survived is frankly a miracle. Huzzah. Yeah, the picture of the recreation of the guy literally just like holding his legs inside the cockpit is fucking wild. I I, I don't know how they did this. This is crazy. That's some crazy shit. Crazy incident. Also, Osset Bernstein, and that's your stuff to Wikipedia. When you're high for today. New sponsor alert, RBP 349 is also brought to you by Axon. 
obviously protecting family should be everybody's really number one priority, but we want to do it safely. And the people at Taser believe that safer self-defense is better self-defense. Taser's line of non-lethal self-protection devices are small and lightweight enough to carry with you or in your glove compartment or purse, but powerful enough to incapacitate an attacker. Guns carry unnecessary risks for you and those around you, and even pepper spray can harm you as much as an attacker. And it's often ineffective. Taser products are safer and easy to use. They use an electrical charge to immobilize attackers attackers for up to 30 seconds, allowing you time to escape and send emergency dispatch directly to your GPS location. When you fire off your taser, the devices come loaded with features like laser-assisted targeting and emergency dispatch, which will send response teams to your GPS location Upon firing, more than 237,000 lives have been saved with the Taser network of devices, apps, and personnel. Um, And now you can own a Taser, the number one choice of law enforcement agencies to protect yourself and your family with Taser's line of smart self-defense products. And it's available without a permit in most U.S. states, which is huge. So get the uh, Taser Pulse Plus or Taser Strike Light, which is like a flashlight version of it. One's like a little you know, projectile thing. One's like a a flashlight, the strike light. You go to taser.com, use the promo code Ross and save 15% now at taser.com, promo code Ross. That's T-A-S-E-R.com, code Ross. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Next and final segment. James Harden, please know. So sports really are the first place in life I learned about heartbreak. And what what disappointment feels like. Like sports more than anything else I've rocked with are proof in the pudding that life is not fair. And I mean that from a player's perspective. Like growing up when you were playing lacrosse, when I was playing baseball or soccer or basketball, um, you learn a lot. You learn a lot about life with sports. And then you become a sports fan as an adult when you're no longer playing. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, and really... It, it, the heartbreak just becomes even more intense because you don't actually have anything to do with it, right? Other than just sitting and watching. In the latest edition of Sports Shit Down Ross's Throat, mm-hmm. the Houston Rockets are in jeopardy of losing, uh, well, everyone, frankly, at this yeah, point. We've yeah. already lost uh, Mike D'Antoni, our coach. We've lost our G- GM of my basically my formative years, Daryl Morey. Um, now we are in, in threat of losing James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Really only the former is, a, is, is an important thing to me. James Harden has been like, I, I'm the, a bigger fan of him than any other athlete in the world for several years now, right? My favorite professional athlete, period, in any sport for several years now. That's including World Series champion Astros. That's including Deshaun Watson, J.J. Watt, DeAndre Hopkins, Jose Altuve, George Springer, Carlos Correa, like that's including Justin Verlander, that's including everybody on every team. James Harden has been my dude. We got him in this incredible trade from the Oklahoma City Thunder, obviously became a generational talent offensively. He fixed up his defensive game. He's been breaking records left and right in terms of efficiency on offense. Um, he was had more blocks than any other guard in the NBA last year. He's very much improved defensively. He's incredible, and the, and the Houston Rockets have, as such, given him everything he deserves. They have tried to provide him with as many different players as they can. They've tried to bring in guys that he wanted in. They've basically let him start to run the team, a la LeBron James. When LeBron goes from place to place, he often acts as like the general manager slash coach, even though they have a general manager and coach. Harden has been given that right in Houston. We brought in his boy, Russell Westbrook. We traded away, we mortgaged the entire future of the franchise for that. And after one season, and I'll add, one COVID bubble season in which Russ got COVID, they didn't even really get a full effort at it, and they got sm- uh, smushed on by the Lakers, who ended up winning the ship with like one of the best duos I've ever seen in LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Now they're just saying, like, fuck it, we don't think Houston can pull it off, allegedly. And the, the, it just started as a rumor mill, and now it's turned into a full-blown story where Harden apparently wants out. He wants to get to Brooklyn. And watching the way the media and NBA Twitter has treated this story over the weekend drove me bonkers. Because all y'all, everybody who's not a Rockets fan, essentially, had been roasting James Harden over and over and over and over for years and years in Houston, oh, he's a failure. He doesn't show up in the playoffs. Worst defensive player in the league. Let's put together a seven-minute YouTube clip of the different times he let somebody blow past him defensively. And now, the second he wants a trade, everybody puts on their dick-sucking face. You people are the worst. NBA Twitter is the worst place. Somehow, it's like 
as toxic as political Twitter. All the time. Like, if you thought Twitter's been bad this past few weeks, that's NBA Twitter all the time. Even in the offseason. Maybe even worse in the offseason. So I have takes. Two sets of them. Okay. My first set is for if he leaves. Okay. If James Harden leaves Houston, after everything that we've been through, after all this shit, and he leaves us with just Tillman Fertitta, a rookie head coach, and, and, and a GM, I'm not sure what the situation is. I can't even remember. He, what, I, I have to go full-on Harden hater. I can no longer ride with this man. He, it like, vampired the whole team, and now if he chunks Deuce, I'm, we're fucked for a decade. Like, my favorite, favorite team is going to suck for 10 years, which is not all that different than them, you know, being good and never winning a championship anyway. So I don't know that it'll matter all that much, but if he leaves, he's just another generational NBA talent who couldn't get out of his own way, a la Tracy McGrady, Patrick Ewing, Sean Kemp, historically, there's so many all-stars who, like, never got a ring. Allen Iverson, all these famous Hall of Fame ballers. But they just couldn't get it done, right? Like, if he goes to Brooklyn and plays with Kyrie and Kevin, I know that looks great on paper and fun, but oh my God, the most dramatic bunch of crybabies in the history of basketball all in one place. It will be an utter shitstorm. I kind of hope it happens at this point, because the Rockets, I'm with him. The franchise is not headed in a good direction. It's not. No. But that's largely the result of him. Ownership, not great. I get it. Sure. But James has been given a lot of what he wanted. These are things he asked for. Made happen in many cases. See, in my mind, I was trying to relate, like, Cam leaving to if James leaves. But they're totally different things. Like, when Cam left, the Panthers organization. In the NBA, in terms of the way talent is handled, especially quarterback. The NFL is so funky with this shit sometimes, Well, like, Cam never got what he needed. The Panthers never gave him what he he wanted. You know what I mean? So he had to, like, struggle to do what he could there the whole time. Yeah, it'd be a different story if, like, Harden never got Westbrook, if they never traded away Chris Paul and forced him to play with that. But Harden forced the... Chris Paul yeah. trade. Harden forced the Westbrook trade. Harden made these things happen, and now what? We're not even vibe like this isn't the vibe. What, what the fuck? So it's crazy. It's a crazy situation where like, you know, if he leaves, he's a flopper. He's a crybaby. He's incessantly whiny. He's not fun to watch play for anyone other than the team that are fans of the team he's on. So you're saying if he dips, you're James, you're out. I cannot do this thing that I know a lot of my friends so are going to do, he, which is where they follow Harden and they're going to do like what LeBron fans do. That's not how I roll. I agree with that. I agree with that. But you're saying you would go full on like, nah, like I'm totally like, fuck that guy. Like I'm out on Harden. Like he left I, us. I he will he wait, took what he wanted. I wait for an ample amount of the story to come out. Sure. But if it's straight up like that he was like, well, I tried this and it didn't work. I'm Deuces, going I'm going else. to play with Katie and Kyrie and sure. get that New York money. Yeah. Then Fuck that guy I can, because I can be we are screwed. Yeah. Like, we are so screwed if he leaves. It's over. Like, we're going to be trash forever. Yeah, but on the flip. Bro, my kids will be stoked on the Rockets before I am again. But on the flip, like, if he decides to, like, say he goes to all this drama and shit like that, and for weeks and weeks he's talking about will he leave, and won't he, he stays, leave, and then he stays. Then he's the greatest scorer in NBA history. The most talented offensive player to ever touch a basketball. Even though he obviously at this point could give a fuck about the Rockets, it seems like. Yeah, because I get that. I okay. get that. I always am able to put myself at this point at 33 and having watched sports enough. I get, man, if I'm James Harden business, right now, I'm looking around and I'm looking at Brooklyn and I get it. I get that that's an attractive option, if not only from a branding standpoint. Sure. Houston is a brand right now. I get it. He's had the same issue year after year after year. He doesn't. Do the players like do guys like playing with him? Did Dwight Howard and him mesh? Do Chris Paul and him mesh? Or is there? Is he a good enough leader? The same questions. Does he flop? Is he? Fa- does he just all he's trying to do is get fouled? He spends the whole game at the free throw line. Yada yada yada. He sucks at defense. He's broken every narrative except one, which is that he can't win a championship with his style of play. Yeah. One of the videos that you saw go crazy this year was after Kobe Bryant passed away. Rest in peace. Um, about his commentary on James Harden as a as one of the all time greats, and acknowledging him as one of the all time greats and as a guy who changed the game, but also said his style of play is not conducive to winning a championship, and he doesn't ever think he will. And for a guy that's defended Harden for years and years and years and years and years and years, and years mostly on Twitter, um, with my own flesh and blood, yeah, then it's hard for me to accept that now that they were right if he leaves. 
And if I think that's the admit it, that's what you're admitting if you leave. If he leaves, I would agree. Right. Actually, you know, that your he, style of play and what you were not, trying to do was it didn't work. You have to write. You cannot be the focal point of a team. If he leaves, he's admitting that he can't be the focal point of a team. Which he'll never. I, I and I don't even know. I, I think it's because it's not that anymore. If he goes to, well, no, you're nah, right. But you're, like, you're exactly nah, right. Yeah. From an outside looking in standpoint, yeah. He couldn't be the guy. He nah. didn't get it done. Mm -hmm. They brought him he had to go after into All-Star after All-Star, yeah. and now he's going to join somebody else's trio. Obviously, there's still a lot to be talked about here. We don't know if this is actually going to happen. Kyrie Irving is allegedly like, wait, what? We're going we're gonna to bring in the guy that wants the ball the whole game? Every play? I, the ball for, the whole game. I, I thought that was our thing, Kevin. Thought, thought we, we were gonna going. Thought we were going to share the ball the whole game, and nobody else would touch the ball, Kevin, with... I'm going to bring in James. I don't know how it would work. It's not even about that at this point. It's just about, it's not a loyalty thing. I'm not some naive jackass who thinks like players should stay for some franchise. Like he's working for Tillman fucking Fertitta. But it's a dedication. I wouldn't want to be there either. It's a dedication to the philosophy, I think. Yes. Like, you yes. know, you can't. And, and I don't mean that philosophy. from a fan standpoint either. No. I mean it from like, you, you w went this route that made you a historic offensive force. Yes. And now you're telling me. You're just gonna wait give a minute. Up on so it? Sorry, guys. Everything I asked for didn't work. I'm gonna have to I'm just head gonna out. Dip. And obviously, it's a business decision. Obviously, this man has a lot of other things he thinks about beyond Rockets basketball legacy. Legacy. Yeah. But it's just hard. It's the hardest well, thing about sports as a fan is that you become you become such a fan of specific players, like to where you know Harden is like a. Like, I know it's silly, but he's like an iconic figure in my life. Sure. In some ways. No, I feel you there. Cam um, was the same I thing always there. admired how he just got shit on over and over and over and over. And how he, he would just invent another move. Yeah. And come out and fuck everyone in the ass again the next year. Break another scoring record. Set some other offensive, like... He was setting records that... Like, 40 years they've stood. Since Michael Jordan and shit, they've stood. Breaking records that I never thought would be broken in terms of offensive efficiency. Then, then breaking his own records. And then to watch him just be like, nah, fuck it, I give up. Man, it's just sad. It would break my heart. I'm serious. For that reason. Not for any of the naive reasons that mostly we, we usually get upset about sports. Just from a, a philosophical standpoint of like, I was with this dude. I rode with him. I, be, I believed in that. defended it, yeah. And defended it. And, and I, I thought I understood where he was coming from. From, and now it feels like you didn't. And now maybe. it feels like I didn't, and that maybe this was just. And and I get that, and it's like, but that's sort of. It's like a relationship. Yeah, 100%. it's weird, man. Like, well, you put a lot of your time maybe we, and emotion maybe we into never, this person. Maybe we never saw that. Eye, eye, Christopher, maybe we never saw things on the same page at all. Maybe we were never on the same page. So, what do you think leaves a better legacy? Going goes down to with Brooklyn. The ship? Goes to Brooklyn, wins a ring first year, or stays in Houston, never wins a ring. And continue no, going to Brooklyn, getting a ring. You think that leaves a better yeah, legacy? Yeah. yeah, which is why I get it. Sure, I get it. I get the I get the allure. And if it was me and it was Brooklyn, look, man, the Nets got dope jerseys, and they got Steve Nash, who is my boy. Historically, we have hung. Yeah, best friends. Best friends, and it's Brooklyn, dude. And you're in New York, and and I get it. But holy, holy shit. This is Houston. I mean, and the... God abandoned this place long ago. Sports wise, this has been the f most ridiculous three years, dude. Go look. DeAndre Hopkins catching the Kyler Murray Hail Mary in the yeah. end zone to cap it off last night was like the. It felt like I was in prison and someone had shanked me in one side. And as I was like laying on the ground, bleeding out, another guy came up and was just like, you know what? Shank right in the stomach. Just like gave me another knife to just deal. I was just like. Ah! I'm watching all these rumors swirl about losing. I mean, if you were gonna pick a dude that wasn't Harden, it was it was Hop. Sure. Like I, he was so amazing. We drafted him and watching, him, and then to lose him. But at for least Hop, nothing. Yeah, at for least nothing though. But that wasn't on him. At least you know no, what I mean. No, it was on. Like, that's this that's on the. Order. I'm arguing like okay, that's fair. That's fair. Totally different deal. But fuck Bill. But as a Houston <laughs> fan, still pain. Yeah, it's still pain. Just it pain. sucks. Sports fanship is a very, as we as like it's become more and more hilarious to me that we all sign up for the pain. Yeah. One fan base at the end of every season gets to be stoked. Yeah. And the rest of us are unhappy. 
that's like one in 30 in most leagues. Or, or just content, but not happy. Sh- yeah, I mean, disappointed. You're dis. I mean, well, even when my team has put together incredible seasons where I've been like, that was a fucking amazing run. We got further than we should have. Even, even so, when they lose, you're a little disappointed, right? Well, it's, it's still just like, well, what the fuck is the point in all this? Like, why like, are man, you know we just what I mean? went through a lot emotionally for it just to be over and yeah. we didn't get a trophy. Like, out in of like it or the anything. divisional round. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, or like you put a, like, say the Panthers right now win out or something like that. Win every game for the rest of the season, somehow make a wild card playoff berth and then like lose first round of the wild cards. It's like, why, like. Oh, you mean <sighs> the Texans plan for many of Bill O'Brien's best years? Yeah. What we'll do is we'll win 11, 10 to 12 games. We'll go to the playoffs and we'll get smoked by sixty by the Patriots or Chiefs. It'll be dope. <laughs> the Colts. Be so dope. Every once in a while, though, we'll pound on Andy Dalton in a wild card game. That'll be <laughs> fucking sick. Everybody's gonna love to see that. But seriously, if this is the last day I spend with James Harden as a Houston Rocket, it'll be a sad one. You could get a breaking any second. It's I know, past I noon. know, man. And also, I, we could find out in any second like he's re-signed with the yeah. with the Rockets or something, and that this was all like bargaining chips. You never know. NBA trade season is insane. Is officially underway. And uh, I'm terrified. This is this is the most scared I've been sports wise, I think in my lifetime. Um, the only time that I would could, could even compare to this would be like when Yao kept getting hurt, or when like, you know, when I was a little kid and Hakeem went to the Raptors. I was like, man, Hakeem's old as fuck. We already got two rings. Like, I don't understand what just happened, but fine, whatever. Like, I didn't care that he was in Toronto. It didn't bust my heart open. This would destroy me sports wise. Coles has the uh, the James Harden bobblehead here. That I am now holding. Please don't go. Please. For the love of all that is good and decent, stay. Can we somehow simultaneously play the song by Barcelona titled, Please Don't Go, and then also the song from the Interstellar soundtrack titled, Stay. Thank you very much. Before you head out to take on the world, it's time for some very important announcements. First and foremost, you've been saddled with three legal obligations as a result of having listened to this entire podcast, the first of which you must rate and review. The second of which you must share this show with one person, a friend, a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, any one individual that you think that person might really like the RBP, the Ross Boland podcast. Send them the Spotify, the Apple podcast, the YouTube.com slash Boland media link. Send them your favorite episode ever. Send them whatever you need to send them, but share the show with one person this week, one person next week, one person every week until the week you die. And then you can move on to number three, which is your third and final legal obligation to uh, support our sponsors. Use these sponsors' codes for the sponsors that uh, keep the show showing and growing. We've got Honey. Join Honey.com slash Ross. we got Bird Dogs. BirdDogs.com. Code RBP. We've got the National Lacrosse League now. Huge. ShopNLL.com slash Bolin. And then, of course, we've got Axon. Taser.com, promo code Ross. Support our sponsors. Use those URLs and codes. And uh, that's your third and final legal obligation. After you do that, you can check that third box. I'll call off the dogs. We don't have to see each other in court, and we can all live long and prosper. It's huge. Huge. Follow us on Instagram at the Ross Boland Podcast, where every day we fill up our story with photos and videos sent in by our listenership lovingly, affectionately known as the RBP Gang. We collect those photos and videos through Snapchat. Coles and I will tell you our Snapchats shortly. Keep the Snapchats coming. We'll take them every day and throw them up on the Instagram, at the Ross Bolin Podcast on Instagram. We also make announcements about when we're live on Twitch and such. Follow us on Instagram, at the Ross Bolin Podcast. We are on Twitter, at Ross Bolin Pod. Same type of stuff goes down. Announcements, content related to episodes. Good shit, good shit. Follow us on Twitter. We're also on Facebook.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. You can follow me, Ross Bolin, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Same name, all three. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at W-R-B-O-L-E-N, at W-R-Bolin. My first name is William on all three platforms. And then, of course, as I mentioned, you can watch Chris and I a few times a week live in the evenings on Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland, playing Call of Duty, playing Modern Warfare, Warfare, playing uh, Black Ops Cold War, playing Zombies, playing Fall Guys, playing Among Us, playing Apex Legends. We've been having a blast. We're trying to work in more games. We've had a lot of requests for like FIFA and some old school shit that we might start working on on Twitch. So twitch.tv slash boss rolling. Just go to the URL right now. Give us a follow. Then check in uh, when we're live tonight. Monday again will be the next time we're live. Monday 16th, the 16th of November. 
We will be live, twitch.tv slash boss And Christopher, where can everybody follow you on the different social mediums? You can find me on Twitter at Q0ULS. You can find me on Instagram at ChrisSC99. And you can find me on Snapchat at Chris underscore Coulson. That's C-O-U-L-S-O-N. Check out Bowling Media's television and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, available wherever you listen to RBP. Also on YouTube.com slash Bowling Media. If you love TV and movies, you will love OCC. It is hosted by myself. And my dear friend, Mr. Barrett Dudley, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, Bowling Media's uh, TV and film podcast, available wherever you listen to RBP. Huge announcements coming on OCC this week. Absolutely world-changing. Massive. World-changing. Huge. Huge. That will do it for RBP 349, produced by Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. We'll be back on Wednesday with RBP 350. Whoop, whoop. And then, of course, on Friday with an ad-free edition of RBP exclusively on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast for the dues-paying members of the RBP gang pledging their monthly support to keep the podcast showing and growing in exchange for ad-free exclusive RBP. Minimum of just $5 monthly on Patreon. Go to Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast right now. Come through, support the show, get more RBP. You are not alone. Pod men get paid. Respect, Mr. Park. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Christopher, peace be with you. And, and also, also with you. you.